Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Be ever impressive. But never duplicate. 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 Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. So right now I'm back with the Flamed Neck Chipson, and I am kind of doing a little bit of a wet sanding with 1500 grit paper. I found some light scuff marks and scratching marks in the white finish on the roundy edges of the body of the guitar, uh, more of in the area where my right arm is. So what I'm doing is 1500 grit wet sanding, knocking down any type of a little bit of dirt and dust that may be in the finish, making it nice and smooth and getting rid of those scratches and then hitting it with a 2500 grit paper before buffing. So I hit it with the buffer a couple times just to make sure that this thing was going to have a nice gloss finish to it. All right, so I'm just polishing her down with a microfiber cloth, getting rid of all the remainder rubbing compound, checking things out, seeing exactly how much of the scuff marks are still in the finish, and it looks like I got all of it out, including the dust particles that were in the finish as well. You know, these chips in factories really don't have very good quality control when it comes to anything that they're doing, uh, other than just eyeballing it and throwing it in a box. So like I said in my last video, the front ends need a little bit of a dressing to them, uh, getting the sharpness out of them more towards the body than the rest of the neck. So I end up getting my Stumac fret dressing file, and uh, as long as you use the rounded end on the fretboard or the binding, it will not leave marks on the fretboard. It works pretty damn nice. I like how uh, Stumac has got, I mean, there's a lot of other companies out there too. I've got a variety of tools that you can use for getting the job done and it works out really, really nice. Afterwards, I ended up doing a oiling on the neck. When I masked off the neck when I was working a little bit on the uh, body and the headstock, the tape ended up drying up a lot of the oil that I already put on the neck. So I just gave it a little bit of a, just a little bit of a drink. All right, so instead of doing an unbagging, unboxing, whatever you want to call it, of all the parts that I end up getting for this guitar, I'm just going to lay them all out right now. I had to buy all these parts. I didn't have anything as far as stock goes for white, pure white pickup rings or white knobs. So here are a couple of white output jack plates. I already did the measuring on them. They should fit just fine on this. Uh, they're basically for Gibson anyways, so, you know. This box here, which is kind of the, uh, probably the most expensive thing that I picked up for this guitar. Uh, once this guitar is finished with all the mods and stuff, I will do a price list of how much it costs to, if you're buying everything brand new, how much it's going to cost to mod a guitar. Um, 
varying depending on the type of parts that you're going to put on here. So right here are a set of Gold Rush pickups. And once you look at the label on them, they're in white. So I'm going to open this thing up and kind of give you a little bit of a view of uh, what to expect as far as the color scheme goes if you haven't already figured it out already. So what I ended up doing is picking up some white bobbin uh, pickups with gold pole pieces. And I think that's going to look a lot better than the original which was kind of like a cream color rings with the gold pickups. I really don't care for the cream color that much. Um, I know it's pretty basic on a lot of Gibson guitars and stuff, but I just like the way that the white looks better, especially with this white body. So yeah, I'm going with these guys. So I didn't have any knobs uh, at all as far as a color white with the gold writing on them. So I ended up picking up four. Actually, I picked up eight uh, with the gold writing. And then the Tunematic Bridge, the stock one, is going bye-bye. And I am going to use a Wilkinson's Roller Bridge with this. I think it's going to be a lot better. Uh, then the rectangle part of it is the nut. Now, I'm not going to be using this three-way switch that I got. I had to order one in gold with a white polka trip with the white lettering on there. And I think that's going to end up working out a lot better as far as uh, the way that this is going to look. So right now I'm going to start to mount the pickup rings onto the pickups themselves. Pretty simple, not very difficult to do. Uh, as long as you can get that spring not to shoot out on you and it stays in one spot and you're able to screw it down. Now there is, these are wax potted pickups so there is wax inside of the holes so it makes it a little bit difficult to end up putting the screw in but once you get it started it pushes the wax right out and it ends up working out just fine. To get a little bit more of an idea of how this is going to look, I'm going to start kind of fishing wires through and putting things in place just to get an idea of what this is going to look like. Now, I like it. I mean, I don't know about you guys, with the cream color, you know, you may think that this is too too much white, uh, not enough gold, maybe, you know, whatever, but I kind of like the way this looks. So there's one pickup. I'm going to go ahead and put the other pickup in. And I'm hoping that the pole pieces match up with the strings, um, you know, with this thing. So I like the way that looks, you know, the white on white. It's not really a white background, but then again, it's not like complete white wash either. So I got the white knobs in place, and I'm going to start putting the bridge on, and then the tail piece afterwards. And I kind of like the way this looks. This looks pretty nice. At least I like it. With the neck and everything else, it just comes together. Now I ended up doing a little bit with the headstock. I didn't give it a gloss finish, I gave it a matte finish, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So right now I'm doing the you know, shielding paint inside of the cavity for the pickups and I'm just spreading it around. They didn't do a very good job at the routing on the pickups uh, at all. I mean, the bottoms of it is wavy and stuff. It's really a deep pocket that they put on these things. Uh, but it gives you plenty of room to run your wiring through where the three-way switch is, plus the pickup wiring to the control cavity. It's not Alright, so while the shielding tape, or sorry, shielding paint is drying, I'm going to start working on this nut a little bit. Now this came with a basic plastic nut, which basically all Chipsons do. Um, not very many of them come with anything higher quality unless you ask for it. So I ended up putting a Graftech tusk nut on here. And uh, yeah, so now I've got it measured off. The trick to this is to, now I use a ruler that is special for doing this type of work and the trick to it is is measuring off 
an eighth of an inch on each side of the nut, okay? And then using the string spacing gauge, or ruler, what they call it, uh, kind of running down and finding what matches and I got the nut kind of glued into into its slot right now. What I want to do is I'm going to start, just start the filing of the nut, getting it to where, uh, you know, just starting off. There we go. Now we're starting to cut. Right on top of that spot. Now, what I ended up doing to, in order to shape this nut to have the same arch as the neck profile itself for the radius of the neck, is I got a flat pencil. Basically, it's a Home Depot construction pencil that I ended up taking and putting on the belt sander. And I will run this going across from one end of the nut to the other end of the nut. And then that gives you a line. By the time I get done with everything that I have to do with this guitar, uh, as far as setup goes, I can go back and check the uh, check my um, action height at the first fret. And I can adjust it from, you know, from here. But the thing is, is that that line the strings will probably just go either under that line maybe right above it so I leave a little bit of meat there so I've got that string right where I want it to be I'm going to go ahead and get my other do the same thing right on top of that line Now I have my string spacing done, and all of them are angled in the appropriate direction that they're supposed to go. Now it will be time just to kind of start mounting stuff. Um, yeah, the shielding paint is pretty much where it's got to be as far as drying goes. If I put the strings on, uh, I can do the wiring last. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. This way I know that I'm pretty good with the nut set up here and uh, yeah, get on to the next steps. <laughs> 